Kelly, yeah, I am always at such a loss when I hear that one of our friends or a loved one or family member has just received a serious diagnosis. I feel so uncomfortable and I don't want to make them uncomfortable. I want to help them. I want to do what I can do, but I never know what to say. I never know what to do. And why is there such a stigma around illness? I don't know, but I know I feel uncomfortable. As soon as someone tells me they've got a serious illness, I kind of freeze up and I don't want to be that person. Yeah. I would say the traditional cards and flowers are wonderful, mm -hmm. but if you are especially close to the person who is sick, it's always nice to be able to do a little something extra for them and let them know that you're there for them while they're going through it. So what should you do and what shouldn't you do? We're going to discuss it. I'm going to jump on in here. What shouldn't you do? Don't ask, what can I do? Oh. That's me. Well, the thing is, this person is going through something life-changing, life-threatening, and very serious. They do not need to manage you and manage their illness. Right. What else shouldn't you do? Don't tell them you had a really good friend going through the same thing. I actually had someone call me and say, well, you know, my best friend just died of that. And I just feel so bad for you. And all of a sudden, I'm like, what? And then I feel bad because this person's so upset because they think they're getting ready to lose, you know, a second friend. So by the time I'm off the phone, I'm like, oh, I'm sure everything will be fine. I'll be okay. Don't you worry about it. I'm probably not really that sick. I mean, I'm trying to make this person feel better. And another thing, please don't tell them that God doesn't give us anything we can't handle. Oh, boy. I don't think that's a good thing to say. <laughs> it's just not. And if you are the one with the illness, don't be afraid to ask people for help. Because there are so many people out there that want to help you. Absolutely. They want to make things better for you. So right. give them that opportunity. So what are some of the things that we can do? Offer to take them to the doctor. What about offering to sit with them during the doctor appointment? Yes. Uh, lots of times if you're anxious about hearing a diagnosis or getting an update, you may not have the wherewithal to remember everything that's being said. So it may be very helpful, like a maid of honor at a bridesmaid shower, taking notes on who gave you what gift yeah. so you can write a thank you note, having that friend there to write down what the doctor is saying. Absolutely. Another thing you can do is offer to sit with them during treatments. That can be kind of a lonely time. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable. So having someone there to talk to, who can talk to the nurses for you or the kind doctors. Kind take their mind off what's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Another thing is you can show up with a meal or some kind of decadent dessert and just have a little treat for them. And a lot of times they have these meal trains that I'm sure everybody's been a part of. You could organize or get one of those started so that their meals at their home and they're not having to worry about cooking for their family, kids, husband, whatever, in addition to managing whatever illness they've got. It's a great idea. Just because they're sick doesn't mean that they don't enjoy all the things they used to enjoy. So make it normal. Show up and do the laundry. That's really important. Somebody can come over, work on your laundry, maybe change the sheets on your beds. If you're bedridden, it's nice to have fresh sheets, really nice. In my case, I was not able to use my arms for such a long time. I couldn't make a bed up. I couldn't oh, wow. do that kind of strenuous activity. Somebody coming and doing that for me, my mom did it. It was so nice. Yeah. Another thing you can do, I actually was sick during the holidays. So one of my friends offered to come and put up my Christmas decorations for me. I love that. It was amazing. I love it because Kelly is a person who is into the holiday decor, let's just say. Yes. So it doesn't matter if it's Halloween, Valentine, Christmas, Easter, she's going to have that house decked out. Yeah. And I can't imagine your house at Christmas time without your things up. And it was great for my daughters also because they wanted the normalcy. Yeah. How about just showing up to watch a movie or just to talk? Absolutely. All the things your friend enjoyed doing before they were sick, they're going to enjoy while they are sick. Right. So think about that. It's very, very important to feel as normal as possible. What else? 
Does your friend have children? Mm. They need to go to soccer practice. They need to go to dance, dance class, yeah. cheerleading practice, mm -hmm. whatever. Who's going to take them? If you can do that for them, that's one less thing they have to worry about. What about their pets? Who's going to lift that heavy bag of dog food or, or cat litter. food? <laughs> yes. Who's going to do those things yeah. for their cat? Who's going to take them for a walk? Oh. Sometimes you can't do that. If someone can come in and take care of your pets for you while oh, you're sick. That's an excellent It's idea. a wonderful help. Yeah, absolutely. If your friend has a caregiver, they need a break too, and they need some help also. You had a wonderful caregiver. I did. And it was almost like she didn't need any help because she had her caregiver, but... He needed help. Yeah. He was exhausted, still being a dad, trying to be an employee, and he needed a break. Mm -hmm. And I actually called Jo mm -hmm. and her husband mm -hmm. and said, can your husband come and pick him up, take him out so they can just hang out, talk about stuff, eat, and uh, he doesn't and have, have to time. Yes. Have a, yeah, just have a good time. Absolutely. Without feeling the guilt of leaving you there. So the guys went out. Joe brought me a salad. We sat, watched TV, ate the salad. It was wonderful. It was such a nice break for my husband. He came back completely rejuvenated. Yeah. It was wonderful. You forget how much that weighs down on a person to be in charge of all the medicines and feeding. And absolutely. I was absolutely, at that point, not able to take care of anything. And there is a real phenomenon known as caregiver decline. And we actually have, in some of our dementia videos, we talk about that a good bit. So I'll link some of those videos below. But you've got to watch out for the caregivers to make sure they've got enough energy to take care of the person who's ill. Absolutely. Do anything you can to help the person who has an illness feel attractive, mm. feel better about themselves. If they are going through cancer and are having to have chemotherapy, maybe some fantastic scarves or hats. I actually did a hat shower for a friend of mine who was going through chemotherapy and we called it Bonnets and Bellinis. So we made Bellinis. I love that. I love that. It was idea. fantastic. Everybody yeah. brought hats. Her daughter was there with her, who was very young at the time. And it was really sweet to see her see a happy part of this. And that was all of the friends coming right. together. And then the added benefit of her having a bunch of hats or scarves. Yes. To choose from when she goes out. It was awesome. What a great idea. It really was. What about offering to go wig shopping with the person who is ill or going through chemo? That's big. That's really big. I know you had some wigs. I couldn't tell that it wasn't your real hair. I went by myself and I will say it would have been more fun to go with somebody. Yeah. So I highly suggest that one. Yeah. Number 11, research your friend's illness. Find out what your friend's illness is all about and the types of symptoms they may be experiencing. And it may give you some ideas on what you can get them or how you can help them through that. Maybe look at the side effects of treatments or drugs or anything that they may go through. I know that with chemo, you get dry mouth. You also are freezing to death during treatments. And my daughter was really good at researching this. And she was still, I guess she had just graduated from high school, but she was still kind of young. And she just got on the internet and started looking for things. And she was making sure I had the candies, special candies that would help me with dry mouth. She was making sure I had a plug-in throw that I could have with me in the chemo chair to keep myself warm. Mm. It was wonderful. And then Jenny actually, brought this lovely jacket that oh. actually has pockets on the inside. It was a robe. It was a robe, mm -hmm. but it had a place for the bulbs that you have to wear when they put tubes in after surgery. They go in little pockets so that they don't weigh you down and they don't swing when you're walking around. You have to have something that holds them, but it kind of hid them. Mm -hmm. So when I walked around, I looked sort of normal, a little bit chunkier than normal, but <laughs> sort of normal. And it was a lovely shade of teal. I really, really liked it. I felt just a little bit pretty. Yeah. And you don't feel very pretty when you're going through this. So that was lovely. I never would have known that I needed something like that. I do remember this one funny story when I went in after the initial diagnosis and they really went further into it, which was pretty overwhelming. And my husband's with me. And in the middle of all of this, this very kind nurse comes in and hands me this 
clippy belt thing that looks sort of fanny packish, but it's made with these red bandana pockets and someone's awesome. made them and I was supposed to wear that around my waist all day long with the bottles just sitting in there. <laughs> So in the middle of hearing some really horrible news, when the lady walks out, I turned to my husband and I said, listen, this is not happening. I am not wearing this around my waist. We're gonna have to find a better option. And my husband's going, Kelly, you, you really got some serious stuff to think about here. I don't care. I cannot wear this red bandana around my waist. I'm not gonna do it. I didn't know it. anything about the red bandana when I got the rope. It was a happy coincidence. It was a wonderful coincidence. <laughs> so that was because she researched it. I yeah. didn't know I was gonna need that. I didn't know she some knew. of the things that you said that you loved, like coconut lotion? Coconut or? oil, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was amazing because your skin gets so dry and someone gave that to me. Something natural yeah. is a really good thing to use. It was also good for my hair as long as I had it mm -hmm. because I have very dry hair. So that was wonderful. And people just, they researched, my friends researched and would send me things that I didn't know I needed and it was so nice yeah. to have them. So I guess the takeaway from this is put some time into it. Mm -hmm. Try to think outside of the box and make sure your focus is on ensuring that your friend knows that they are going to be taken care of in some way and that they don't have to worry about the things that normally they would worry about. That all they can do is just let the other stuff go. You can handle some of that and maybe they can just concentrate on being sick because that's enough. Don't forget, don't ask, what can I do? Just do, do it. it. What ideas do you have for helping friends with a serious illness? Write in the comments below. All of us, we're at the age where we're going to be going through things. Yes. And have been going through things. We just want to learn from one another and share it with one another. We're going to be interested. Uh-huh. And we're going to be interesting. So let's learn some more stuff.